Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Tomb of the Sunken Skulls Archaeologists in Sweden found a mysterious and disturbing underwater grave with heads impaled on stakes inside. Experts found a burial from 8,000 years ago filled with battered human skulls. Two of them had wooden stakes through them, and nobody has any idea what it means. During the Stone Age when the grave was created, the burial plot would have been situated at the bottom of the lake. This means the skulls were impaled and then placed underwater on purpose. After that, 11 grown adults were thrown on top of the grave, not even buried in it. Their corpses were stacked on it and likely weighed down with rocks. Only one of the 11 adults still had their jawbone intact. And then, things got even stranger. The burial contained jawbones, not from humans, but from animals, along with other random arms and legs from forest critters. All of the arms and legs came from the right side of the body. Lead researcher Frederick Hallgren called the burial an example of a very complex and structured ritual. Scientists hope to decipher the meaning of the weird ritual, but for now, they can only scratch their heads in confusion. The situation is that these were hunter-gatherers. They were early humans who had no access to agriculture and who had never seen a city before. Yet they were conducting incredibly complicated burial rituals for totally unknown purposes. This is by far one of the weirdest grave sites ever found. Number 9. The Leyden Papyrus X Around 250 AD, a piece of papyrus was buried with a man in Thebes, the ancient capital of Egypt. He was buried with a lot of paperwork, all of it appearing to be written by the same scribe. In the early 19th century, a self-proclaimed adventurer by the name of Jean d'Anastasi came across the papyrus and sold it, along with a ton of others, to the Dutch government. All these ancient scrolls and texts were given to Leiden University for safekeeping. Each papyrus was given a letter, A through Z. In 1885, many were translated into Latin and publicly published, but all of these scripts are extremely strange, especially Papyrus X. The piece of papyrus buried with the random man in Thebes contains 20 pages. In total, the text has about 111 recipes for how to extract or counterfeit precious metals. The recipes are extremely vague, written mostly with abbreviations and void of any followable directions, and yet each one gives rough details on how to physically create gold and silver, purple dye, and inks using alchemical principles. It's a cookbook, one that someone may have used while practicing alchemy to create valuable precious metals. The whole thing is extremely confusing, but many of the other papyri in the collection are also confusing. Papyrus V has a recipe for a mystical ink made from seven perfumes and seven flowers. It also contains a recipe for how to purify gold and has the names of 37 secret plants. It includes ingredients like snake's blood, rat's tail, lion's tooth, and dragon's blood. The consensus is that in ancient Egypt, alchemy was a lot more popular than anyone had ever imagined. Ordinary people were walking around with recipes for how to create solid gold using dragon's blood. Would you try out one of these ancient recipes? Why not? Couldn't hurt, right? Number 8. Ancient Tablets A little over 2,000 years ago, there was a student in a temple in the ancient city of Borsippa doing his homework. The city is now in modern-day Iraq and is a little more than a ruin. But when the student named Nabu Kusurshu sat down to do his homework, Iraq didn't exist. This was ancient Mesopotamia, and the student was training to be a brewer. His daily duties included brewing beer used in religious rituals, keeping records on clay tablets, and preserving ancient hymns. He was both a scribe and a brewer, writing in cuneiform scripts. We know all of this because the details of Nabu's life have been discovered immortalized on clay tablets recovered from Mesopotamia. The script he used had already been around for 3,000 years, way longer than the English language. The Sumerians invented the script as a way for them to record food rations and beer rations, and to ensure that workers got paid. As time progressed, the Sumerians used their script to express more and more complicated things. It went from keeping track of food to telling stories and creating myths. 
But at some point, Sumerian fell out of favor. The Akkadian language became the new normal, and scribes had to translate the ancient Sumerian wisdom into the newly popular Akkadian. Thanks to this effort, the oldest information in the world has remained preserved on clay tablets. One of the men responsible for immortalizing this knowledge was Nabu, a young man who probably just wanted to finish his work and go home at night. As he sat in the shade of a gigantic pyramid called a ziggurat and wrote his notes, he had no idea people thousands of years later would be studying them. And now for number 7. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Missy Telford and Naz Baluat. Thanks so much for watching and supporting this channel. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join the family. Number 7. The Lord Palace of the Kings In 2022, archaeologists announced a discovery so shocking that they were accused of making it up. In southern Iraq, the long-lost Lord Palace of the Kings was identified. The ancient palace, uncovered in modern-day Tello, once stood above the Sumerian city of Girzu. 4,500 years before today, the temple was one of the most important places in the civilized world. The archaeologists who made the discovery were led by the British Museum. They had always known about the temple because it's mentioned in over 200 cuneiform tablets recovered from an abandoned administrative site. These tablets, just like I told you about with Nabu the Brewer, recorded all the information of the city. The writing mentions a great and powerful temple where the god of farming, Ningirsu, was worshipped. However, nobody believed the team would ever find the ruins. They said it was a waste of time and funding. But it wasn't. The team uncovered the broken, battered, and ruined mud brick walls and foundations of the structure. It was built to overlook one of the earliest known cities in the history of humanity. The Sumerians became a civilization about 6,000 years ago, and it was about 5,500 years ago that they invented writing. Somewhere in that general time frame, the city of Girzu was made, and later the temple. Timothy Potts from the Getty Museum has hailed the city as one of the most important heritage sites on the planet. Unfortunately, there isn't much more to discover inside the temple. After so many thousands of years, the place has been looted extensively. All that remains are the foundations, crumbled almost to dust. Number 6. Roman Zombie Spirits Archaeologists working in Turkey recently came across an example of ancient mysticism. Most people are aware that our ancestors had a fascination with everything from spells to underground rituals. Our ancestors, meaning people all across the ancient world from the shores of Britain to the jungles of India, had an obsession with magic. But what was found in Turkey is strange even by ancient standards. Researchers found a cremation burial at the necropolis of Savalassos. The burial is strange and that it deviated significantly from the other burials at the site. It happened during the Roman era, around the 1st century AD. The cremated remains of an unknown individual were buried instead of being placed in a secondary location like normal. Romans frequently cremated their corpses, but they usually kept the ashes safe in a special building. In this case, the cremated remains were buried with bent nails. The human ashes were surrounded by nails, then sealed underneath a layer of brick and lime. Researchers believe this was part of a magical ritual, with the nails acting as a type of barrier. The barrier was to keep the spirit of whom the ashes belonged in the afterlife. The brick and lime acted as a kind of final barrier above, preventing any restless zombie spirits from escaping the ashes and wreaking havoc on civilization. Whoever this person was who received the burial, it must have been viewed as a very powerful witch, necromancer, or sorcerer by the community. Number 5. The Pazaric Carpet High up in the frigid and lowly Altai Mountains of Siberia, an amazing piece of history was discovered in 1948. Just after the end of World War II, archaeologists found the grave of a prince 5,400 feet above sea level. Inside the grave was a hand-knotted rug, currently the oldest in existence. It's called the Pazirik Rug, and radiocarbon tests showed it to be about 2,500 years old. This was a huge deal at the time. Even though the rug is the oldest one we have, 
Its weaving techniques were almost certainly around for thousands of years earlier. Researchers have guessed that 4,000 years ago in Russia, locals had already mastered the art of carpet weaving. This particular carpet must have been a prized possession for the prince buried in the mountains. He was discovered with plenty of other treasures, although most of them were pillaged a very long time ago. There was a hole in the top of the grave that had likely been dug by thieves. They never bothered to cover the hole, and so the rug was found frozen in ice. It was that ice coating that protected the rug for so many centuries, preserving it for posterity. The rug, or the carpet, which can't fly, by the way, is currently being housed at the Hermitage Museum in Russia. I don't think you'll be able to visit it anytime soon, but there are great pictures of it online. Number 4. Human Skewers Julius Caesar was one of the only Roman emperors who wrote a book about his exploits and achievements as emperor, which doubled as a kind of autobiography. He wrote all about the Gallic Wars, describing exactly how he defeated the Gauls, and telling everyone just how clever he was. In his book, titled Gallic Wars, Caesar described the invention of a brutal weapon of war. It was a kind of human skewer, a fortification he used to impale his enemies. Recently, archaeologists finally found one. Historians have debated over the authenticity of the barbaric weapon for years, but now we have proof that Caesar really did come up with it. So what was the weapon? It was a kind of barricade. Caesar had his soldiers cut and sharpen hundreds of tree branches, then sink them into trenches and cover them over with branches. The plan was to allow the attackers to run over the hidden skewers, and then they would impale themselves on the sharpened branches. It was a pit trap, and a savage one at that. In Caesar's book, he claimed that he would place these traps around his camp so that at nighttime, attackers would find themselves impaled. Archaeologists finally found the remains of one of these human skewers at Bad Ems, an old Roman site in Germany. Students were combing over the site when they found evidence of a sunken spike defense. They were lucky not to fall in and impale themselves on the 2,000-year-old spikes. Number 3. Ancient Brain Surgery 3,000 years ago, in the ancient city of Tel Megiddo, somebody performed brain surgery. Researchers have found what they say could be the earliest cranial surgery ever practiced in the Middle East. It went down in the Bronze Age in Israel. A doctor performed a cranial trephination on their patient, drilling a hole into the patient's skull to relieve pressure built up by a swollen brain. The doctor did this without any modern medical equipment, basically using sharp rocks to bore into someone's skull. This isn't the first evidence of brain surgery in the ancient world. Scientists have found similar evidence in South America, Africa, and all over Europe. For some bizarre reason, ancient societies were obsessed with brain surgery. Scientist Rachel Kalischer says trephination was a universal surgery widespread across the globe for thousands of years. But this newest discovery comes with tragedy. In 2016, archaeologists found the twin burials of a pair of brothers who lived in Tel Megiddo. The older brother had obvious signs of cranial surgery. A large, square piece of skull was removed using an unknown instrument. It doesn't look like the man lived very long after having the piece of his skull removed. Researchers have suggested the brothers didn't have enough money to continue paying for treatment. And so one died, and then the other. They were then buried together, though it's unclear how long the second brother lived after the death of the first. Number 2. The Mighty Wari Queen Huarmi's castle is an ancient archaeological site north of Lima in Peru. In 2012, local archaeologists unearthed the remains of an ancient queen inside the pyramid mausoleum. The tomb was one of the most fabulous ever found in South America. It contained the physical remains of 58 noble women, including the body of the queen. She was buried in a private chamber while her nobles were buried in a massive crypt. These women, according to National Geographic, were part of the Wadi civilization. The Wadi ruled over huge patches of Peru between about 700 and 1000 AD. They went extinct about four centuries before the Inca came into power. The queen lived about 1,200 years ago. 
Her skull was taken from her burial place and given to forensic artist Oscar Nielsen, who then reconstructed her facial features. For the first time in history, the skull of a Wardy queen was recreated in full, spectacular detail. Oscar used a CT scan to create a virtual 3D image of the skull. He then worked backward to add the flesh and other facial tissues. The queen was about 60 years old when she died, but the final result of the recreation did not show an old or withered woman. Based solely on her skull and Oscar's forensic knowledge, he sculpted the face of a powerful woman who ruled one of the greatest empires in South America's history. Sadly, we don't know who this queen was. We don't know her name or anything about her life. But we do know exactly what she looked like. Number 1. The Tarkhan Dress In 1913, a linen garment from 5,000 years ago was discovered at the Tarkhan Cemetery near Cairo, Egypt. Over a century later, the Tarkhan dress is still considered the world's oldest piece of women's clothing. The dress is stashed at the University College London, radiocarbon dated to 3,482 BC. When the dress was found, nobody understood its importance. Archaeologists figured it was a much earlier piece of clothing that had been tossed into the grave. It was sent to the university and sat untouched in a collection for 65 years. Researchers didn't take an interest in it until 1977, when they were doing a project on funerary rags. The dress is now one of the most important pieces of clothing anywhere in the world. How the dress survived so long is baffling. The truth is that we know very little about the garment or who may have worn it. The dress is made of hand-woven linen. It was likely fitted for a young woman, and visible wear shows it was worn a lot. We don't know if this was an undershirt, something the woman may have worn on a daily basis, or what other clothes may have been part of the outfit. Thanks for watching! Which discovery did you like the most? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time! Bye!